Hi guys. This is Diagratech. Today, we are going to do an actual configuration on this 1921 Cisco router. We will configure PPPoE, PPPoE with VLAN ID, DHCP, SSH, and Telnet remote access. I will show you the step-by-step -step configuration. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials, thank you. Let's proceed. First, I will connect my console cable to the console port and connect the other end which is USB to my laptop. This would be our network diagram. There's no ISP router so the PPPoE will be configured on the Cisco router port Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. The Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 would be for my LAN with network 192.168.1.0 slash 24 subnet mask. Now, let's open the putty. To check the communication port number. Go to search. Type device and select device manager. Scroll down and look for ports. In my case it's COM4. Go back to the putty and enter the serial communication port number. Leave the speed to 9600 and connection type to serial. Click open. I just reset the Cisco router so I'm being asked if I want to enter initial configuration. I assume that you already have some basic knowledge of CLI and how to navigate between different configuration modes. We are currently on user exec mode so type enable to enter privileged exec mode. Configure terminal to enter global configuration mode. Let's check the iOS version. You can see the running version is 15.1. Let us set the host name. Enter the command no IP domain lookup to disable the DNS lookup feature if in case of incorrect commands or typo. Now, let's proceed with the PPPoE configuration. We have two options so you have to choose which configuration suits your requirements. First option is PPPoE without VLAN ID. Second option is PPPoE with VLAN ID. Some ISPs requires VLAN IDs like in my case, it requires VLAN 500 so I have to configure sub interface for VLAN tagging. Let's configure the first option, PPPoE without VLAN ID. Going back to our network diagram, Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 is for our one so we have to configure PPPoE on that interface. Interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. Enter no shutdown since by default the interfaces are shut down. No IP address. PPPoE enable group global. PPPoE client dial pool number. You can choose any from 1 to 255. We will use pool number 1. Next is we will configure dialer for the PPPoE. Interface dialer, you can choose any from 1 to 1199. We will use dialer interface 0. Again, no shutdown. Next is the IP address configuration. IP address, we are not going to set statically or DHCP. We will set it negotiated over PPP. Encapsulation, we will choose PPP or point-to-point -point protocol. IPTCP adjust MSS, we will use recommended which is 1452. Next is we will specify the dialer pool, we will set the same with the dial pool which is 1. For the PPP authentication we can configure either CHAP or PAP, or even both. We will set PAP for now and later on I will show you how to configure both. PPP PAP sent username, input the username provided by your ISP which in my case Jack Bayani at Unify. Followed by password and enter the password provided which in my case is all as well. 
you can do show history to view the command's history or all the previous commands entered. We can also do show run to check the running configuration. Here is the interface configuration. Go further and you will see the dialer and PPPoE configuration. That's how to configure PPPoE without VLAN. Now, I will show you how to configure PPPoE with VLAN ID but first, I will delete the configuration we entered, assuming it's a new device or newly factory reset. I will do it quick then we can proceed. Let's check the running configuration again. You can see the Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 has no configuration and also the dialer 0 has been removed. We will now configure the PPPoE with VLAN ID. Since I explained to you the configuration, we will do it quick for now. Interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. No shutdown. No IP address. IPTCP adjust MSS 1452. Now, we have to configure the sub interface and trunk. Interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0.500. I used 500 for reference since the VLAN ID is 500. Encapsulation.1Q and the VLAN ID which is 500. PPPoE enable group global. PPPoE client dial pool number 1. Next is we will configure the dialer. Interface dialer 0, again you can use number between 0 to 1199. IP address negotiated over PPP. Encapsulation PPP or point to point protocol. Dialer pool and the same dial pool number which is 1. Dialer group 1. PPP authentication, earlier we only configured PAP. However, we can also configure CHAP or PAP or even both. We will use both PPP authentication method for now. We will first configure CHAP method. PPP CHAP host name followed by the username provided by your ISP. PPP CHAP password and also input the password provided by your ISP. Next is we will configure PAP method. PPP PAP sent username followed by your username and password provided by your ISP. Now, I will connect the cable to Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 for the one which we configured the PPPoE. Let's now check the status. Notice the message that says Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 changed state to up. Show IP interface brief to display the status and all interfaces of the router, also the IP address assigned to each interface. Here, you can see the dialer 0 status which is up and also you can see the public IP that has been assigned. That's how to configure PPPoE. Next is we will configure the default static route. IP route and 8 zeros, 8 zeros means all. This static route instructs the router to send all packets to the dialer 0 which we configured the PPPoE. Next step is we will configure the LAN interface and DHCP. Going back to our network diagram. The Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 is for our LAN interface with network 192.168.1.0 with slash 24 subnet mask. Interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1. No shutdown. IP address 192.168.1.1 and the subnet mask slash 24. Next is the DHCP. Service DHCP. IP DHCP pool and enter your preferred name, we will use LAN. Enter the network address 192.168.1.0 and the subnet mask slash 24. Default router is the default gateway 192.168.1.1. DNS server, we will use Google DNS and Cloudflare DNS, you can input one or multiple DNS. 
lease would be in days, we will use two days, this means, the DHCP lease will expire and renew every after two days. Next is we will exclude IP addresses from DHCP pool. IP DHCP exclude address and the range of IP addresses. So starting from 192.168.1.1 to 192.168.1.20 will be excluded. The first DHCP IP address would be 192.168.1.21. To save the configuration, you can simply enter WR which is shortcut for write memory, or you can enter the command copy running config startup config. You can view the DHCP configuration by entering this command show run, pipe begin DHCP. Here, you can see the DHCP configuration. The Gigabit Ethernet 0. The sub interface. Lastly, the dialer 0 with the PPPoE configuration. Next is we will configure the NAT. Interface dialer 0. We will NAT the traffic to dialer 0 not on Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0, it is because the PPPoE is configured on this interface. IP NAT, since this is our one interface then we will use outside. Next is the LAN. Interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1. IP NAT, we will use inside since this is our LAN interface. Now we need to create an access list which will identify which specific traffic will be translated using NAT. Access list, we will use standard access list so we can use one. Permit and the LAN IP 192.168.1.0, and followed by the wildcard of slash 24. Next is we will NAT this access list created. IP NAT inside source list and the access list which is 1, NAT to interface dialer 0, overload. This command will create a NAT overload or PAT rule which tells the router to translate any address identified in access list 1 to the address assigned to dialer 0. The overload keyword allows one public address to be shared among several private internal addresses. I will now connect my LAN cable to interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1. Let's check the status. Interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 changed state to up. Let's view the interfaces, show IP interface brief. Notice Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 has now the IP address and the status is up. And again, you can see the public IP address of the PPPoE. Let's try to ping the Google DNS. Success, means we can access Internet. Notice the LAN icon, it shows that we are connected to a network. Let's open the command prompt. Type IP config to display all current TCP IP network configuration. Notice the IP address received from DHCP is .21 since we excluded .1 to .20. Also the default gateway which we set. Let's try to ping Google DNS. Ping 8.8.8.8, success. We can open and test the browser. Here, you can check my other video tutorials. Now. We will check what is my public IP address. Enter what is my IP.com. Take note of my public IP address. Now, let's go back to the Cisco router. You can see the public IP address are identical since the PPPoE has been configured on the router. Lastly, we will configure SSH and Telnet for remote access. First we have to create a password. Enable secret, we will set Cisco as our password. From now on, when you log in from user exec mode you will be asked for a password. We will enter the password Cisco. Also you need to configure your domain name. Now we will generate the RSA key pair. Crypto key generate RSA, at this moment, a key size of 2048 bits is acceptable. 
Key sizes of 1024 or smaller should be avoided. Larger key sizes also take longer to calculate. Notice the message that it says SSH version 1 has been enabled. Since SSH is enabled, we also have to configure the VTY lines. Line VTY04 Login local to check the local database for usernames. Transport input, for this demo, we will enable SSH and Telnet for remote access. Lastly, the username and password. This are the details you will use when you try to SSH or Telnet to the Cisco device. Now, let's close this putty and try to SSH and Telnet to the router. Open the putty again, set connection type to SSH. Enter the gateway or the public IP address. SSH port is 22, click open. Accept this security alert. Login using your username and password which in my case is admin and admin. Now, we need to enter the password to enter privileged exec mode, in my case it's Cisco. Great, SSH access is successful. Now, let's test using Telnet remote access. Connection type is Telnet. Enter the gateway or public IP address of the remote site. Telnet port is 23. Click open. Again, enter your username and password. Enter your password to go to privileged exec mode. Great. Telnet access is also successful. Well. That's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you like this video. Kindly check my channel for more amazing tutorials. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more upcoming videos. Thank you and see you in the next video.